Today, we're going to be setting up a thumb drive to be able to be a multi-booting thumb drive. There are a few different options we have here between the Cruiser, Ultra, and Extreme, but most important item is making sure that it is fully metal if you're gonna be using this often. There is a slew of different ones, but just because it's the smallest doesn't mean that it's the best. So in this case, you can see just a few options that you have there from SanDisk, which is a fairly reliable company. Next, we're going to go through and start creating a Linux bootable drive. To start, we need to go to DistroWatch. You can pick whichever Linux distribution that you want, and there's this entire list here on the right-hand side that's constantly being updated. But today, we're gonna to talk about Pop! OS and Fedora. If you go to System76 or pop.system76.com, we're gonna download the NVIDIA version. You can download one for the Raspberry Pi or for the LTS, but for now, we're just gonna stick with the NVIDIA version. That'll start downloading in the background, and we're going to go next to Fedora, or getfedora.org, and we're going to download the workstation. We're going to click the Download Now button, and there on the right-hand side, we're going to click the DVD ISO download. That'll take a little bit to download. Then we're going to use Belena Etcher, which you can get for any operating system that you're running. So Mac, Windows, Linux, and a slew of different types of Linux at that. Really cool thing is, you pick your file. In this case, we're going to pick Fedora, we're going to select our thumb drive, and then we're going to hit the flash button. And it's going to prompt you to say, hey, are you sure you want to overwrite this? And you can click yes. It'll give you an ETA of how long it's going to take. And in this case, we sped it up a little bit. After it's done flashing, it's going to verify that the image is correct. And then you're good to go. Now, creating a Windows install USB is not quite the same. You can use first by downloading the ISO for Windows 10, you're going to click the multi-edition ISO. Then you're going to click the language that you want. In this case, it's going to be English. And once you hit confirm, it's going to create both a 32-bit and or 64-bit download link. After that, it'll start downloading. Now, for Windows 11, you can go down to the bottom and you can select the ISO option. Again, click the multi-edition ISO. Click download. Click which language that you want and with Windows 11 you only have 64-bit edition option once it's downloaded then we can go through and use the Rufus program to flash the Windows installation media onto a thumb drive you can use a portable edition or you can just use the regular Rufus here Windows does make their own but it is slow and in my opinion this works a lot better and consistently. Once you've downloaded it, you can go through, open it up the, the program, double click on it to run it, and it'll ask you, do you want it to perform online updates? In this case, we're gonna say no. We're just gonna grab the application. On the device, it's gonna automatically pick a thumb drive, and then you can choose your ISO or drag and drop your ISO to the Rufus program. From there, it should automatically set up the rest of the items like the GPT, the UEFI. You can go into the advanced options if you want to, but in most cases, just click start. Again, this is going to take a little bit of time. In the bottom right hand corner, you're going to see how much elapsed time it actually takes. So we're speeding the video up a little bit. Once it's written, you're good to go. And then now you can see the Windows installation media is ready to go. Now, what if you could do both? A create a Windows and a Linux bootable USB. First, we're going to do this with Ventoy on the Windows installer. So if you go to the Ventoy.net, you can go to the downloads and then select the zip edition. Once you unzip this, you're able to go through and basically create a thumb drive that you can drag and drop an ISO file onto and any ISO file that you have will then become bootable, which is awesome. So save the file. From there, once it's downloaded, you can open up your Windows Explorer, going here, unzip the file, and once it's been unzipped, go ahead and jump inside and double click the Ventoy to disk. In this case, we're showing how to extract all. After it's been extracted, now you can go in and click the Ventoy to disk option. Then it shows you the current version. It says, hey, here's the thumb drive. You can have a drop-down menu, you have multiple thumb drives plugged in. 
and all we're going to do is click the install button. This is only going to take a minute. It says, hey, are you sure that you want to do this? Because everything on this drive is going to be formatted. And we're going to click yes. It says, all right, we're going to lose all the data, but we're going to overwrite it. And this is real time. This is very fast when it is writing it and getting it all set up. It says, congratulations, it successfully moved over. So in this case, we're going to take those ISOs that we grabbed earlier. So we're going to grab Ventoy. Right now has nothing except for the drive labeled. So we're going to go over, open up the window here. Then we're going to grab a couple ISO files, namely our Windows and Fedora file from our downloads. And we're going to copy and paste them over onto the Ventoy. This takes a little bit, depending on the media and or which thumb drive that you have on the writing speed. In this case, it says about a minute. We're going to speed things up with Movie Magic. After it's finished writing, writing to it, we're going to go through and we we'll see if both of them are there. We unplug your thumb drive and plug it back in. At this point, let's check to see that these ISOs are still there. And yes, they're both there, which is great. So now that you know how to do this on Windows, let's go to the next section and say you want to do this on your Linux side. So creating a Ventoy drive with the Linux script. So you can launch a GUI, but otherwise we're going to go back to ventoy.net. We're going to download the linux.tar.gz, scan on down, download that tar.gz, and save it. Once you've saved it, then you can go to that directory and we're going to extract it, much like what you did with the Windows zip. Put it someplace that you can easily find it. In this case, we're going to go to the desktop. We hit the extract button, show the files, and you're able to see if there's our extracted folder. We have a lot more options here, which is interesting. But we're going to then open up a terminal and we're going to use the ventoy to disk.sh. And let's see at all these other options that we have. Let's go to the README. And as you can see, you can install Ventoy, force install, and also update Ventoy as well. As well as some other cool things on preserving some space at the bottom of the disk for different installations. So we're doing specifically the script, not the Ventoy web here. We're going to open up another command line and going to go Ventoy to disk.sh. And in this case, we're going to actually show you if you've never worked with Linux before, let's find out what devices are plugged in and where they're labeled at. DF space tag H will show you what disks are currently mounted. And then I've done this again after I plugged in the thumb drive. It's slash dev slash SDB one. So that's part of what we need for this command. So Ventoy to disk, we do a dot slash to run a shell. It says, hey, here's how you run the program, but you're gonna need to do this and make sure that it's labeled correctly. Hey, you can't do this to the partition, you have to do it to the whole drive. So we take off the SDB one and just make it SDB, and you need to do this as root. So you go sudo dot slash ventoy to disk dot sh dash capital I slash dev slash sdb. Then you input your password for your user. It says, hey, we're going to erase everything that's on the drive. Are you sure you're okay with this? Are you sure you're sure? Why for yes? And then it starts creating the partitions. Again, this is very quick. This gets done in real time, which only takes about 10, 15 seconds. And then you have a completely blank drive ready for you to copy and paste over any of your ISO files. So we've got a blank Ventoid disk again. Let's go ahead and copy and paste. This time we're going to grab a handful of different ISOs and paste them, including Fedora Workstation. We've got some uh, Windows and Windows servers and a couple other items here. So we're going to speed things up a bit. Now, using your Ventoy on a machine, 
I'm gonna grab my framework laptop. We're gonna grab the thumb drive and we're gonna open up the laptop. This is just a small thumb drive at this point, one of the plastic ones, which is not my permanent Ventoy, but for this purpose, it works out fine. I'm gonna hit the power button and then on my framework laptop, I am going to hit the F12 button to choose my boot device. Uh, your manufacturer may have it be on a different yeah, function key. Once I click this, I can go through and select my thumb drive, and you can see I've got both the Fedora Workstation Live and the Windows 11 installation. So just to prove this work, I'm going to hit the Windows. It's going to then boot up into the Windows install option. As we can see, the Windows loading. And it's at the setup, which is fantastic. So now if we power this off, this means that this is working on the Windows side. Let's verify that the Fedora side is working as well. So press the power button. It'll shut down. Three, two, one. We're going to power it back on. Again, hit the F12 button to choose your boot device. And then when we get to do that, we're going to select the sand disk. Click the Fedora side this time. We've got our Grub boot menu here. On do we want to test or start it? We're going to start it. Don't worry about the test this time around. We'll start seeing Fedora load up. As we can see, the Fedora logo loading sign is happening, and then it's going to boot up into the temporary boot environment. So the great thing is, is that you can load up as many different Linux and or Windows ISOs that you want. And this is gonna be a great tool for you to have in your back pocket for whatever your use case is. Since we're all done, we know this works, we can power off the machine. Hopefully you find this useful. And if you like, subscribe for more topics like this. We'll see you next time.